Hey everybody, welcome back to the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Implementation video series. This video is going to talk about our terminal block configurations. You can see here that we already have a project open and we've already talked about our top level, our project configurations, but now we're gonna talk about our terminal strip drawings and our terminal strip configurations. Now, what is this really going to be used for? Well, after we're done building our schematics, we have the ability to create a specific report that is specific for terminal blocks. Now, you have to have a schematic built and you have to have terminals in your schematic in order to generate one of these at all. But inside the configuration, there's a lot of information you can manipulate and pull out of your schematic to generate this really cool looking drawing. So inside of the terminal strip configuration, there's a few default types that you can choose from. You can always create your own custom one as well. But what I recommend doing for any one of these configurations, any one of these in the terminal strip or any one that you find in here, is always, always, always find one and duplicate it and manipulate or change and edit the duplicate. Don't mess with the original one because if you mess up the original, then we have to figure out a way through either your local value added reseller or somebody like myself to come and help you get that back into your system. So again, always, 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 if you're going to manipulate one of these, just simply highlight it and duplicate and then edit the duplicate. In this case here, I've already created one and I've added it to my project. So any one of these I can take and now add to the project and it will be in a part of this particular project. Again, these on the, you can see on the, the brown ones here, they're part of the application and the green ones over here are part of the, conf the uh, project. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. I personally like to maximize this screen when I'm working in it, but what this is, is gonna allow me to, again, create a, essentially a graphical report of all the terminals I have in this project. Now for this, Technically, it's just for this one terminal. I may have, uh, or terminal block, I may have two, three, five, ten terminal blocks. I can create ten graphical reports, one for each of these of those in my in my schematic. So, starting from from the beginning, we have the ability to name that configuration type. So, in this case here, it's just the default for my ANSI sheets. And then I have the ability to define things such as the size, the dimensions I want on that, the graphical representation for each one of these terminals. So in this case here, I have my width and height. Um, I can also edit the accessory terminal, as we can see here. I have the ability to change the earth collector if needed and multiple levels and how how big is it going to, to make it? You can see here with number six that I have a second level and that it is now double the size of the original. Symbols, what kind of symbols am I going to get? Now, symbols is something new for 2021. What it does is it allows you to insert a graphical representation just below the number of each terminal within the block, kind of like how a ground is right here, but it allows you to add this little graphical representation for what that terminal's actually being used for. In this case here, you have accessory terminals, earth terminals, as well as a just a reserve, you can see here, reserve. Your wires and cable cores, you can manipulate certain information about the wires and cable cores, uh, the length of those wires or cables, as well as the wire mark, the destination mark and cable core that you can see here in red, blue, and green. You can also change or add information about your bridges, anything that's connecting these different terminals. You have the ability to import cable information. So again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video is that you need to have a schematic set up and there needs to be the terminals, or in this case now, you also need to have cable information, not just wire information in your schematic in order for this kind of information to be pulled into this graphical representation, this graphical report that we're seeing here. Again, this is these are just very basic little setup things. Nothing says you have to go in here and change these, but just going through the 
through this to show you where you can go and find this to manipulate it, maybe make the cable information a little bit smaller, so on and so forth. But again, you have the ability to change the cable mark, the cable reference information, or the essentially it's a symbol, but the cable label that you would see inside of here, all the information that appears inside of this. And destination, which is ultimately the end goal for this terminal block report, this graphical representation, right? We have our total terminal block with all the bridges, all the accessories, all the wires coming out of that terminal block. And in this case here, we have a cable, I'll stay on this side. We have our cable coming out uh, of the terminal block as wires, as the individual cores turning into a cable, back out of the cable into the individual cores again and into this breaker or switch. So we have the ability to really create a very valuable graphical representation of our schematic that is not in a schematic form, right? You're, you're compiling all this information into a single view. That way, maybe the folks on the shop floor, your team on the shop floor or the subcontractors now have a better view and a better understanding of how you, the designer, the user has, has set the schematic up and why you set it up that way. Additionally, you can go ahead and add a title block. So every time you create a terminal block and generate a terminal block drawing, it's always gonna use the same title block. In this case here, I don't have one set. You can also set other information, other options about the layout for this. And then again, if you want, you have the ability to set a formula for the description. I personally don't mess with the formula, or the description for uh, the formula for the description here. If I'm going to change the formula, uh, the description, I usually just change it here. So with that said, that was terminal configurations. This is the end goal of what is the, the value out of, of the terminal configuration tool, being able to generate a report that captures all this information and pulls it into one single view to share with your team. So I hope this helps. There's a lot more in the actual full-on official training that you can get from your value-added reseller on terminal blocks and setting this up properly. So again, thanks for watching and see you next time.